Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make my famous spare rib mac and cheese. Y'all hang out. I'm Steve from Cookout Coach, where we're all about trying to help you take your barbecue to the next level. Now if that sounds like something you might need in your life, go ahead and think about hitting that subscribe button down below and hit that bell for notifications for whenever we drop a new video that just might be what you're looking for. Today, however, what we're gonna do is my favorite barbecue side. That's barbecue spare rib smoked mac and cheese. If this side sounds like it's over the top, that's because it 100% is. Let's get into it. To get things ready, let's light off our char griller egg corn. Today we're gonna be starting with some apple smoke wood. We're gonna be using some hickory lump charcoal. As normal, we're gonna start our fire with a few lit pieces of charcoal from our chimney. At this point, we're gonna use the instructions from my how to maintain your temperatures in your char griller egg corn video to bring this egg corn up to a temperature of 275 degrees. Now you can do this on whatever cooker you want, but with this being a cold day, this egg corn's gonna do superb. We're gonna start this process like we would for a set of competition ribs. We're gonna begin with great meat, and it's coming from the Heritage Farms Cheshire Pork from down in North Carolina. On these ribs, we're gonna be using some Char Griller Original and Char Griller Rib Rub. Now these rubs were provided by the kind folks at Char Griller to use. We wanna lay down a pretty heavy coating of both the rubs, just like we would in competition, so we can develop a great bark on these ribs. It's really gonna add some texture to our mac and cheese later. With our cooker up to temp, we're just gonna go ahead and cook these ribs like we would any other set of competition ribs. And that's gonna begin with two hours in the smoke. At the two hour mark, we're gonna go ahead and wrap these ribs using some brown sugar, some parquet butter, and some agave nectar on both sides of the ribs. We're gonna wrap them up tight in two layers of foil and put them right back on the cooker. The trick with the ribs for this recipe is we want to pull them off a little bit before they're competition ready. So while I normally pull them off at 202 degrees for competitions today, I'm going to pull these off at about 198 degrees. While our ribs are resting, let's go ahead and get our macaroni ready. We're going to start with one box of macaroni in salted water, cook it to the instructions on the box, and take them to al dente. For our cheese sauce, we're going to keep it real simple. We're going to start with a roux with two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of butter. Cook your roux until it comes together and forms almost a paste. At that point, we're gonna to wanna to start adding our heavy cream slowly. All of our amounts used in today's recipe will be down in the description box below. Once we've added all of our heavy whipping cream and we have a thick mixture, it's time to start adding the cheese. What we have today is one pound of extra sharp cheddar and a half a pound of sharp Vermont white cheddar. Add the cheese slowly and mix it in as you add it. Once the cheese is melted into the mixture, we're gonna go ahead and start adding some seasoning. We're gonna start with two tablespoons of whatever your choice of an all-purpose seasoning is, and one teaspoon of ground mustard. This is really going to help bring out that cheese taste. After our cheese sauce has come together, we're gonna to go ahead and take our rested ribs and prep them. And what I like to do is run a knife down the back of each rib and pull the ribs out individually. Now that we have a rack of ribs without the ribs in them, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in a grid pattern into squares. You can cut your squares as small or large as you want. These are the size of ribs that I like in my mac and cheese. At this point, we can mix our three components together. Our macaroni, our cheese, and our ribs. I wanna add about two tablespoons of barbecue sauce to the cheese mixture once we get everything incorporated. Now that we're all incorporated, let's move our mixture into a half size steamer pan. And at this point, you can use whatever topper you like to top your mac and cheese with. Today, I'm gonna to keep it simple and just use some crushed up Keebler Townhouse crackers. As good as this looks right now, let's get it back on the smoker for about a half an hour to let that cheese take in just a hint of smoke. And after a half hour, here it is. My number one top flight barbecue side, barbecue spare ribs and smoked mac and cheese. This is so good. I guarantee this will impress anybody you wanna feed this side to. There it was, guys. I love that dish. 
if you had to ask people who know me what dish defines me, it's probably this dish. Now, as much as I would love to do a taste test for you right now, that particular dish went to a family Christmas party that I went to previously. All I can tell you is that they loved it, I loved it, the work people that my brother took it to, they loved it the next day. So I would challenge you, go ahead and make this recipe try it. Let me know how it comes out. Tell me if you loved it as well. But till next time, y'all take it easy.